Hi, hello, and welcome to episode seven of a very haphazard vlogmas. I'm Courtney, and here on my channel, I share with you all of my knitting, quilting, spinning, and occasional embroidery. So grab your project and stitch along with me. So it is Sunday afternoon-ish, and it's been a long <laughs> weekend, and I'm on cup of coffee number two. So we're gonna be enjoying that during this video. Have to finish the coffee before it gets cold. So I told you in the last video that we were expecting a lot of snow, and that did not happen. <laughs> It did snow, so let me let me back up. So we were supposed to, like Thursday night, we were supposed to get about 11 inches starting in the middle of the night, around like 2 a.m. Friday, and continuing all day until Saturday. And we did get snow, it did snow all day on Friday, and uh, quite a bit on Saturday, but it was like 35 degrees, so the snow melted basically 10 minutes after it hit the ground. So it was really dense, heavy snow. It just kept packing down and packing down. I did manage to go out in it and um, I got some video of the snow. So in a second, I will pop in some lovely snow clips, but it was not the snow that I had hoped for. <laughs> I was ready for a good like foot of snow, lovely weekend of looking out at quiet snowfall in beautiful Vermont scenery, but it was just a lot of slush. So that was a little bit disappointing and I need more snow. The cats are having a moment. So while I go deal with the cats, enjoy some footage of the snow that we did get. that we did manage to get. There's actually some falling right now, but it's just tiny flakes, it's just a dusting. We're not supposed to get really any more accumulation in the 10 day forecast. So I'm still a little disappointed. It's not the snowy winter wonderland that I was hoping for because really, even though it looks like there was so much snow in some of those clips, the, the roads were still perfectly fine until this morning. It was a little icy this morning, but it just wasn't the amount of snow that I needed to fulfill all of my snow desires. But because it did snow, I decided it was time to pull out my hand knits for winter. So I thought I would share with you all of the hand knits that I've made that I will probably be wearing this winter and also the knits that I need to make to kind of round out my collection and maybe replace some of the things that I do have that I just don't wear that much. So let's dig in to my knitwear basket. So I do have my notebook in my lap so I can reference it for what pattern. Everything will be linked in the description box down below. I'll link it to my project page because for several of these there is no pattern because I just kind of made it up as I was going. But for the ones that I do have the pattern for, the pattern is linked in my Ravelry page. The first one that I definitely used when we did go out on Saturday to see the snow are these mitts. So this is a pattern. Actually, all of the mitts that I have are the same pattern. This is called the Wacky Mitten Pattern. It's a paper pattern. It's n it might be available on Ravelry now, but I'll, when I had it, it was just a paper pattern. And you're actually supposed to do kind of thrummed mitts with this and uh, the lining on the inside and everything. But I used Malabrigo Chunky, I think for this pair and I had no interest in doing the inside. So um, it's kind of a modified version of that pattern and I'm pretty sure it's not linked in this project. But these are kind of my everyday mitts. They're just some fun uh, blues, pinks, and greens. 
I really like these mitts. They've held up really well. I probably knit these six or eight years ago. Just a really good standard mitten. And they're thick enough that they are really good in colder temperatures. So these are ones that I've already used this winter and I will absolutely be using quite a bit if we get more snow, which hopefully we will. All right, I have another pair of mittens here and this is the same pattern, just a different yarn. Um, and that's linked down below. But again, I love this pattern and it's so flexible because you can use different weights of yarns with it. And these are my kind of pink and green striped version. The yarn was actually variegated and it ended up making this really nice striping pattern on the mittens. I didn't have to do those stripes myself, which was really nice. But these are kind of a lighter weight than the other pair and I will get a lot of use out of these this winter. These are also probably six or eight years old. So they've held up really nicely. There's a little bit of pilling, but not too bad. So I will continue to use these this winter. And then the last pair of mitts that I have are these fingerless mitts. This is actually the same pattern. I just modified it and I added a little bit of a cable repeat um, just in one place on the back of the mitt. And I had this leftover yarn that I think someone gifted me, like part of their skein that they had left. It's super soft, but I just made a quick pair of fingerless mitts again a couple years ago. And I actually don't wear these that much. Right now, as you know, I'm making the Brancusi mitts. And I just don't wear fingerless mitts that often, but I'm going to try. These are a, I need to try to wear them more or I need to gift them to someone who will wear them project. So these and the Brancusi mitts, we'll see how much use I get out of them this winter. I should wear my fingerless mitts more, but we'll see. But I've not really worn these much since I made them. I like the color. I do like that they are solid. They can go with a little bit more. I, that's one thing that I really want to work on is adding more solid pieces or lightly variegated pieces into my knitwear collection because those are things that I typically gravitate more towards and would get more wear out of. So I need to work on that in 2023. But let's look at the next one. All right, so this is a seed stitch cowl and I know that it is just a pattern that I made up. It's not a specific uh, pattern because it is um, also twisted here in the middle. Like I think it was the Mobius cowl that had a twist in it, but it's not seed stitch. So I made this pattern up with some yarn that I had. I don't, I don't know what yarn it is. It was not linked in the pattern or in the Ravelry page. I did a bad job on this one. So I have no idea what the yarn is. I know I made the pattern up. I just did seed stitch and twisted the cowl and went for it. But I really love this cowl and I've worn it several years and it's held up really, really nicely. Um, and again, it's a neutral. I need more things like this because this is one of the things I wear the most because it is uh, so versatile. So this one has already been worn this season and will definitely get quite a bit of wear. This is a waffle stitch cowl and this is in some yarn by Unplanned Peacock who is an indie dyer that I adore. I used to help out in her shop as I've mentioned before, but this is a skein that I got from her in her worsted or Aran weight. I think it's worsted. Um, and I just made a waffle stitch cowl. I made the pattern up. There is no pattern linked. It's just a waffle stitch in the round. And I repeated it until I ran out of yarn. And um, this one I do wear quite a bit, not as much as the gray one, just because it is white or a cream color and I worry that it's going to like get my makeup on it and stuff. So I don't wear this one as much as I would like. So I either need to gift it to someone that will or I need to start wearing this one more. But I like that it's neutral colors and that it goes with both um, of my winter coats that I wear the most. So that's a good option to have. All right, this is another seed stitch cowl. I just got on a like seed stitch kick at some point, apparently seed stitch and waffle stitch <laughs> and made a ton of things out of those. But this, I want to say this is eco, 
but I'm not 100% sure. But again, link down below. It's just a seed stitch cowl. I made the pattern up. There was no rhyme or reason. I just made a cowl in the round and went for it. So I wear this one a little bit. It is a little itchier than the other two, so I don't wear it quite as much uh, just because the yarn is not as soft and I can't double it up either. It's kind of an odd length, which again, that's what happens when you make the pattern up and <laughs> you're not paying attention. Uh, but I like it. I just don't know that I wear this color a whole lot and we'll see how much it gets worn. It may need to be gifted to someone who will appreciate it. All right, this one is probably too long to actually get in the frame, but this is the Hitchhiker Shawl. If you will remember, several years ago, probably a decade ago at this point. Hitchhikers were huge, everybody was making one. Um, clearly, I never blocked mine, that's why it's rolling so much. <laughs> but this is hand spun yarn, and um, I wanna say it was into the world, but I loved the hitchhiker pattern. I like how this knit up in this yarn. I just don't wear yellow and navy a lot. I love the navy but the yellow is just not a super flattering color on me. So I don't wear it a lot, forever really. <laughs> it, but I can't let it go because it's my hand spun and it's one of the only things I've ever made with my hand spun that I still have. I tend to just leave my hand spun in a basket and not get rid of it. Just kind of sits there and never becomes a project. So I do love this for the sheer fact that it's something wearable that I made out of my hand spun. I doubt I'm going to wear this that much this winter, just because I don't wear these colors. We'll see. I do, I like the idea of these colors, I just don't love them on me. But it is really pretty and I love that it's my hand spun. I should probably block it, but I don't want to. I like how it curls, I like that it kind of rolls up. But I might make another hitchhiker in a color that I will wear more of, so that's, something I'm contemplating right now. And then the last two things I have are my hand knit hats. This is the pattern Aaron's hat. And I made this, I think in 2016 when we moved to Iowa. So this is one that I've definitely worn quite a bit. I love this kind of, it's almost like a maroon, but it's got a little bit of purple in it. Um, I love this color. It goes really nicely with both my brown coat and my black coats that I wear in the winter. And it's light enough weight that it's not gonna make me like too ridiculously warm. And I think it looks good with the pink hair. So <laughs> this is one that I do get quite a bit of wear out of in the winter, but usually only if we're going somewhere a little bit more dressy. Um, if I'm going out like snowshoeing or something, I'm probably not going to wear this hat. So it has to be like the right um, occasion, but I love this hat. I've gotten quite a bit of use out of it. And then this is the last one. This is the chai latte beanie, and I just made this last spring. I think I didn't finish it until like March or so, so I've actually not worn it yet for the winter, but I needed just a solid black hat to go with my outfits, and that's one thing I definitely need more of is solids and neutrals, like I said. But I love this pattern. I love the um, palm on top. I am super excited to wear this this winter when it gets cold enough. Right now, like with it being 35 degrees, it's not really cold enough that I need a hat. Like yesterday I went out in like leggings and a sweatshirt. It is not that cold. I need it to be colder so we can have more snow, but I'm super excited to get to wear this this winter. This is one that I probably would wear if we went out snowshoeing, uh, just because the yarn is a little bit more durable. And this was a super, super quick knit, so I could easily make another one, but this is probably the one that's going to get the most wear this winter that I'm really excited about. All right, we'll take a little coffee break. So as I mentioned, the other thing that I need to do is plan out some knits to round out my collection. And I have a couple that I've written down that I'm hoping to get to in early 2023. So I'm gonna pop up a picture from their Ravelry pages over here. One of the first things that I want to work on are some mitts and a cowl in a camel color. I have a camel coat that I wear quite a bit and I need something that goes with that. 
So there are a couple different uh, pairs of mitts that I'm thinking about. I'm not really sure which ones I will go with or what cow pattern I will do yet, but I definitely need more things that are in a camel or a brown color to go with those outfits and uh, even just over a sweater when I'm going out but don't need like a full on jacket, a nice cowl can like keep you plenty warm. Uh, so that's one of the top priority projects for the winter of 2023. Then if you've noticed, I only have two hats that I knit myself. I've got five or six that I've knit for my spouse, but I don't wear those, they're too big for me and they're not in patterns or colors that I really like. So I definitely need to add some more hats into my collection. And as I mentioned in earlier videos, I'm gonna do the Lotus Flower Beanie. I'm going to do one for myself in the same colors that I did for my friend. And then after I finish that one, I also have a darker navy that I want to do in that same pattern. So I might make two more Lotus Flower Beanies, both for myself, but that one's probably going to be one that I cast on fairly soon. Then if you noticed, there are no sweaters that I have knit that I'm planning to wear this winter. And that's because every sweater that I've knit, I have given away because it didn't fit. So I'm going to attempt to make some sweaters in 2023. And in a future video, I'm going to go through all of the sweater patterns that I've picked out that I want to someday make. But the kind of highest priority ones right now and ones that I already have the yarn for are the Rocky Coast cardigan. So that one is one I've actually made before. That one did not fit through the shoulders, especially that's where the big issue was for me. And so I gifted that to someone who's a little bit smaller than me in that area and it fits them perfectly. But I went through Ravelry and I looked at a million different people's version of the Rocky Coast cardigan, what modifications they made, how it fit them, if they sized up. And several people recommended the Coco Knits Sweater Workshop book. So I bought a copy. I'm going to sit down and go through the workshop book and see what I can learn about sweater construction and how that might help me to improve my Rocky Coast cardigan and make one that fits. I'm also probably going to size up from what I did before. I'd rather it be too loose overall and fit through the arms and shoulders than me not be able to wear it like the last one. But I already have the yarn for it. It's actually right here behind me. It's this cream yarn that you see in a lot of my photos. I am so ready to cast this on. I do still have the Gretter sweater on my needles which may or may not fit my spouse at this point because I started it in 2018. <laughs> so we'll find out, but I need to finish that one. I'm not letting myself cast on another sweater until that one is off the needles. So when that one's done, this is, I'm between two sweaters as to which one I will cast on next. But one of them is the Rocky Coast cardigan. We'll see how I feel after I read through the Coco Knits sweater workshop book. If I feel confident in my ability to make the pattern work for me, not sure, but uh, the Rocky Coast cardigan is absolutely one that I want to knit again and I want to knit a version that fits me. I just love how that pattern looks. I love the cables on that. And I really, really, really want to have that sweater in my collection because I do think it is something that I would wear all the time. The other one that I'm considering making as my first sweater knit of 2023 I'm hoping I will make multiple sweaters in 2023, but we'll see. But the Mountain Mist sweater is one that I found that works with the yarn that I got from Yarnforia in Philadelphia. I'm going to do it in a gray and pink and white. I really like how this sweater looks with the Fair Isle at the top. It's a little like non-traditional. It's not your Icelandic looking Fair Isle pattern. It's kind of like mountain ranges or diamonds. And I think it'll be a really great sweater for Rhinebeck. I'm really hoping to go to Rhinebeck this year. And I think the yarn that I picked out for this is a really nice lighter weight yarn because October in New York at that time could go either way. I could need something warmer or a lighter weight sweater might be just fine. So I'm really, really hoping to get this one started really soon in 2023 so that I can have it done by Rhinebeck. So either the Rocky Coast cardigan or the Mountain Mist sweater will be cast on as soon as I finish 
the sweater that's on the needles right now. And we'll find out if that one fits. It might fit me. I have no idea. So those are my winter knits that I'm planning on wearing and the projects that I'm hoping to start to add to that wearable collection because I really need to round out my knitwear and have things that I will wear more often. And I also want some pieces that I can wear around the house and when I'm on video calls for work, like the Rocky Coast cardigan would be perfect for that. So I need a couple cardigans or sweaters that I can wear indoors and not just hats and mittens and cowls that I'm only gonna wear when I'm leaving the house. So I'm going to try to be more intentional about planning my knitwear and the colors I love bright colors of yarn and fiber when I'm going to make something. That's what I gravitate towards, but that's not what I gravitate towards when I'm picking out something to wear. If you've noticed, I very rarely wear something with a lot of pattern or something with a lot of color. That's just not my favorite thing. That's not what I gravitate towards. So I'm trying to pick out things that I will actually wear when I'm both buying yarn and picking out patterns and making objects to keep in my collection. So that's where I'm going to leave you for today's video for the seventh episode of a very haphazard vlogmas, a little more of a sit down style today. But thanks so much for watching. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any sweater knitting tips. If you've used the Coco Knits sweater workshop before, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And I will see you in the next episode on Wednesday.